So, it's getting exhaustingly hot, and I am literally falling asleep at my desk. So, that's fun. Um, but not as hot for me as some people further south. Um, and that's not just a segue, uh, although it is indeed a segue, uh, if I let it be and stop filling it with all this other bullshit. Um, basically, what seems to be trending primarily here... Um, and I'm not going to talk about names or whatever. I'm just going to talk about the situation. Uh, what appears to be happening is, uh, at least ha have been happening, because it appears that the situation has been, like, resolved at this point. And I put that in quotes because the subject of this video. But essentially, a, uh, a gas company got hacked, and the hack was ransomware. And with that ransomware attack, um, the entire system goes down, uh, and the pipeline has to shut down. And, and, and the, the, the hackers said, you know, give us money or you won't get your system back online or some shit like that. Well, generally speaking, um, I, I see a lot of problems with the way much of American infrastructure is set up. And I think this is a prime example of why. Because this is uh, a good example of centralization uh, being the problem. The hack and the resulting pipeline shutdown effectively uh, caused a, a temporary gas crisis and it wasn't really a crisis until people started calling it a crisis. Then everybody started hoarding fucking fuel. <laughs> and then there was a real shortage. So, with that in mind, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a whole lot like the COVID toilet paper situation. Like, you don't need ass paper. You don't need it at all. But, like, let's go clear these shelves... Um, and since toilet paper is, like, heavily bulky, uh, it looks like the shelves were once fully stocked with all this stuff, and now th now it's gone. But that's not the case. It's really not. And then that caused the run on the rest of the food supply. There never was a shortage. So far, uh, you can still go to your fucking grocery store and pick up any shit you want. I remember somebody blocking me on Twitter because I, I had the audacity to say, uh, to, to mock all these people posting all this breaking news, um, and all this breaking news had no citations, no nothing. It, it was all like, you know, I know a guy who said a thing and now I'm going to repeat it to you without any sort of... so. This person blocks me and says, like, I, my, my head is in the right, wrong place or something like that. I, f I forget exactly what. But, um, you know, and I have no doubt that that sort of thing has happened so many times. Because, you know, I, I, I like, <laughs> want sources. I want proof of things. But so many other people don't. They don't need sources or proof. They just need... Uh, their thing that they can spread to spread alarmism. Um, and so there's a significant amount of problems uh, currently, right now, um, because people just jump on these bandwagons and share this shit. But that's not the root of the problem. That's just what exacerbated it in the moment. Um, the root of the problem is how can hackers disrupt the energy supply for, like, an entire quadrant of the United States. <laughs> you know, I saw this documentary once, and I can't remember what it was. If I do, I'll let you all know. But basically, it had everything to do with the fact that the power grid and the essential running, working elements of the U.S. grid... Um, are heavily vulnerable, and you can just, like, go in and fuck them up. Um, I, I've also read significant amounts of, you know, guides on how this could be possible. Um, and, like, it's so pathetically easy. 
um, you know, it's easy to take down this global superpower because this global superpower has isolated all of the power for various things into small entities. And these small entities then are vulnerability points. Instead of letting everybody do everything, uh, anything they want, instead of anarchy, you get centralization. And that centralization means that hackers can take down your gas supply. That, and that's not even the fucking end of it. It gets so much deeper and so much more complex. All these vlogs are basically like, I guess, writing prompts for me to make more exhaustive content about it, probably when I'm less exhausted. <laughs> but, like, effectively, um, th there were restrictions on trucking and trains transporting this fuel to begin with. And Biden had to lift those restrictions in order to get the economy going again in that part of the country. He had to lift restrictions in order to get the economy back on track better, you know? Doesn't that just fucking say everything you need it to? As an anarchist or libertarian out there, doesn't that just make our case, right, that suddenly truckers can truck more fuel and trainers can train more fuel um, because a pipeline went down. Well, why couldn't they just fucking do this anyway? Why can't they do this? Restrictions. Centralization. Um, and that that's, again, just scratching the surface. Let me, let me read you a few things <laughs> that, that'll, that'll, Give you some, some food for thought here. No low press, uh, legal, you know, consulting, whatever, uh, site for lawyers and people who want to understand law and have it like explained to them. Um, it goes over, uh, in this article, who owns the minerals under your property? And it's byline is if you're sitting on a literal gold mine, be sure you're the one who can reap the financial rewards. And in this article, it goes over uh, what are mineral rights. Quote, a mineral owner has the right to extract and use minerals found beneath the surface of a particular piece of land. What minerals are included depends on the terms of the specific conveyance, the document in which, within which someone bought or sold the rights. A conveyance might include all the minerals under the land or be limited to specific minerals. The most commonly extracted minerals these days are natural gas, oil, and coal, although a mineral owner might also own and extract gold, silver, or other minerals. Occasionally, a mineral rights transfer also includes surface rights. If so, the mineral owner also has the right to extract minerals on the surface of the land, such as clay or gravel. How are mineral rights separated out for a piece of property? Mineral rights are automatically included as a part of the land in a property conveyance, unless and until the ownership gets separated at some point by an owner or seller. An owner can separate the mineral rights for his or her land by conveying, selling, or otherwise transferring the land but retaining the mineral rights. This is accomplished by including a statement in the deed conveying the land that reserves all right to the minerals to the seller. Conveying the mineral rights and retaining the land, in this case a seller will issue a separate mineral deed to the purchaser of the mineral rights, and conveying the land to one person and the mineral rights to another. Since a seller can convey only property that he or she owns, each sale of the land after the minerals are separated automatically includes only the land. Deeds to the land made after the first separation of minerals will not refer to the fact that the mineral rights are not included. This means that in most cases you cannot determine whether you own the rights to the minerals under your land just by looking at your deed. Owners are sometimes surprised to find out someone owns the rights to the minerals under their land. My mother told me about this when I was young, but I always thought it was fucking stupid that this was the way that the U.S. government was set up. Uh, because what it means is that they can fuck up your land if you find shit on it and didn't check the deed thoroughly enough. 
That's fucking absurd. Um, it also means that if you did all the work of finding those minerals and you didn't check the deed well enough or somebody else down the line didn't, uh, and you start digging for those minerals on your land, you could be liable for damages. Things like that. Things like that really proving that the legal system was not set up to protect property rights. Rather, it was set up to help enrich a small group of people. Because that means that a bunch of people could have just bought up the mineral rights for a significant chunk of land. And, you know, <laughs> if you find stuff on your land that you bought, it might not be yours, legally speaking. Ethically speaking, 100%. Ethically speaking, this is all bullshit. And they have no real reason, ethically, to come to your land and take your shit. But, uh, legally speaking, because the centralizers said that this was the way it needed to be, uh, yeah, yeah, you might be fucked. They might be able to fuck you publicly on your, on your own land. In your own house. Uh, and that's not... That's not all. Um, but, what, what, but wait, there's more! Um, there's this question on Quora. Uh, I th I'm, I'm relatively sure this is accurate. Uh, from Oh, and that, by the way, Nolo article was by uh, Beth Ross. Um, this no uh, Quora article is by uh, Adi Dahia. Six plus years working in an oil major. Uh, how much does it cost to build an oil refinery? And how long does it take to build one? Uh, blah, a good question, but in absence of more details, I'm going to make certain assumptions. Permits and approvals. Oil refining requires a lot of resources, depending on your... And this is Adi Dahia, by the way. I don't know if I already said that. Uh, depending on your co configuration, you'll need to secure land anywhere between fifty to twenty. Uh, sorry, fifty to two hundred megawatts of electricity. I think that's what that is. Megawatts. I don't know. I don't do this shit. Steam, water, and other utilities. At the same time, you'll also need to seek regulatory body approvals, depending on the jurisdiction. This varies wild, the wildly depending on which country and which company and other factors. I'm assuming you, the new refinery magnate, have already sorted them out. Configuration. Depending on your demand and supply balances, which in turn depend on the geographic location of your refinery, you'll have to choose which refinery configuration works the best for you. Oil refining has long moved on from simple crude distillation and is now an incredibly integrated complex com a complex comprising several upgrading and treating units. Feedstock supply, it would make little sense to build a refinery and not know what you will be feeding it. Typically refineries are designed around a basket of design crudes, crude oil grades that are in abundant supply and can be reliably sourced in your medium term horizon while you're still recovering your investment. I'm assuming you'll have this locked. Others, by no means exhaustive, you need to sort out your corporate entity, license to operate, investment, financing, etc. before you even think about breaking ground. So, not only do you have to do all of that shit that he just said, but you also have to make sure you own the land, and there has to be not, like, EPA restrictions on any of this stuff. Um, like... You gotta love it. You gotta love how difficult the U.S. government makes it to use your own shit. Um, and, and it really is the centralizers. And it, it, it is quite a bit the state who is to blame for this. Because they're the ones issuing all these restrictions. Yeah, sure, it could go catastrophically wrong if these restrictions weren't in place. Whatever. Fear-mongering, rah-rah. Uh, shake those tampons, pom-poms, whatever you need for your fucking politician you sent for. But, like, ultimately speaking, uh, we've got, like, so many resources in every given region of the U.S. that piping them from, like, one area to another so that an entire quadrant of the U.S. can be serviced and having that pipe be centralized so that anything goes wrong 
and the entire supply is fucked. Oh, and by the way, Biden uh, voters who voted for him because he was going to cut Dapple, fucking eat it. I told y'all, I told y'all you weren't going to get shit from Biden, eat it. Um, but the idea that you need, like, like all of this stuff, uh, regulatory approval, all of this maintenance, all of this, like, like, minutia detail when looking over your deed to, to, to get the oil out and then to make it usable. That's the reason gas is expensive. That's the reason all these petrol products are expensive. That's the reason it's centralized and it can be shut down by a hacking attack. It's because of centralization. Decentralization, which in turn eventually leads to anarchy, is a solution for so many fucking things. But the U.S. government likes centralization. It likes the petrodollar, which means that it can reign supreme as the leader of the global hegemon, as The Economist put it the other day, while they were waxing philosophical about their Fed coin. Um, it, it, it allows them to isolate power to whatever regions are willing to play ball, pick favorites like Israel. It, it lets them do whatever the fuck they want. And domestically, they're going to translate that to controlling domestic supply. Uh, I, when I was in college, uh, a veteran I talked to somewhat regularly uh, had this theory that they're getting rid of uh, all of the foreign oil so that the U.S., once the petrodollar fails, will have enough oil reserves to be the oil reserve nation of the world and still stick their dick in the rest of it. That makes sense to me, and it's a thing that I've sort of adapted into my mentalities over the years. Um, because it, 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 it clicks. There's no way it doesn't click. Uh, the U.S. certainly still uses reserves here, but not nearly to the degree that they import. You know, it's 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 pretty it's pretty obvious that centralization is the problem here. But you won't get a whole lot of people advocating for decentralized oil. And you certainly won't get and this is a, a whole new can of worms that I do not have time to get into today. But you certainly won't get those people advocating for the decentralization of green tech you know how many green tech uh, uh innovations are locked behind patents are locked behind intellectual property you know how much the government protects corporate interests at the expense of the common person and how much they would fuck the common person for having the audacity to free this information there are so many ways to generate electricity that you just can't legally do because the fucking government is stopping you. So no, this wasn't a crisis. This was normal. This is the normal result of centralization. They made their bed. They should lie in it like I want to. You can probably see how exhausted I am. Anyway... This is brought to you by Opsec Drip. Link will be right there. Feel free to subscribe to his channel. It's 240 glorious pixels of Shemag Laden uh, libertarian news for around 60 seconds a day. Feel free to go subscribe. And my link will be there as well. Smash the state and decentralize the fuck out of everything.